In this video, I'm going to talk about the Laplacian, or as it's also known, the Laplace operator. So what is the Laplace operator? Well, in vector calculus, the Laplace operator is a, a differential operator, but it's a special type of differential operator. It's a second order differential operator in the n-dimensional Euclidean space. So what does it mean to be a second order differential operator? Well, you're taking second order derivatives. That's what a second order differential operator does. And it does some other things. It, it, it sums these derivatives. And what is, an, uh, what is the n-dimensional Euclidean space? Well, Euclidean space is something like Rn, right? The real numbers with, with various coordinates, right? These are vector spaces. You can have R2, which is a flat plane, the xy plane. You can have R3, which is the 3D space that we live in, right? That's the, uh, the 3D universe that we live in. Three spatial dimensions. We're not talking about time over here. So this is just spatial dimensions. So what is the Laplace operator defined as? Well, it's actually the divergence of the curl. So we'll briefly talk about the divergence and the curl in a second. I just want to have a little side note on notation. So sometimes the Laplace operator is written with this triangle symbol. Now this is delta, right? The Greek letter delta. But here's the thing, this can be confusing sometimes because it is ambiguous. Sometimes delta f means change in f, right? That's what delta f sometimes means. And when, when you're looking at single variable calculus or even sometimes multivariable calculus, you're going to have delta something, delta x, delta y, delta v for the change in velocity. Delta f could mean change in f. But in this context, it does not mean that. It means Laplace operator of f. That's what this means. So I actually personally prefer this notation over here, where you take uh, a little superscript 2 on the top right of the nabla, or the del operator. So this guy is called nabla, or the del operator. So it's the upside down triangle. And you can think of it as it's almost like we're applying it twice, but we're not really applying it twice. We're taking the divergence of the gradient. So we do the gradient first, and then we take the divergence of that. Or in other words, the divergence of the gradient of the function f. So what is the function f? Well, the function f has to be twice differentiable, right? Because we're taking second derivatives. And it also is a real valued function. So the Laplace operator is a second order differential operator in the n Euclidean space. And f is a twice differentiable function. And it's a real valued function. It's a twice differentiable real valued function. That's what f is. So let's have a look at what divergence is and what the gradient is. First of all, gradient. Now you've probably encountered gradient uh, in your experience with multivariable calculus. Because what is gradient? Gradient is the vector which points in the direction of steepest ascent, right? You're going up. That's ascending. But if you take the negative of the gradient, that's the steepest descent. The steepest descent is the direction a ball would roll down on a hill, right? If, if you imagine uh, the landscape and the altitude, the altitude of a landscape is modeled by some multivariable function, it depends on x and y, then taking the gradient uh, is actually going to give you the direction of steepest ascent. So that's the hardest work you have to do to climb up a hill. And if you take the negative of that, that's actually if you release an object, where is it going to roll? Which direction is going to roll down? So that's what uh, the, the gradient operator is talking about. The gradient is a vector. It takes the derivative with respect to x, then with respect to y, then with respect to z, and it puts that in into a vector. And that it has directionality. It points in a direction. So it is a vector quantity. And uh, this guy, the divergence, the divergence tells you how things emanate from a source or how things go into a sink. That's what divergence is doing. So divergence takes the del operator and it takes the dot product with the del operator. And here we have a vector quantity. The gradient of f is a vector quantity. It takes this scalar function and it turns it into a vector which points in some direction. And then we take the dot product with the del operator and we get the Laplacian. So the Laplacian is the divergence of the gradient. Let's just have a quick look at what the del operator actually is. The del operator in some n-dimensional Euclidean space is the partial derivatives with respect to each of the coordinates. So x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn. And you can think of it as kind of like a vector because it has uh, components, but the components are not scalars. They're not 
the x component, the y component, the z component, they are actually partial derivatives with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z, if we talk about the specific case of three dimensions. But remember, this generalizes to n dimensions. So that's what the del operator is. So you can imagine taking f and then applying this del operator, what's that going to do? That's just going to mean that each of the coordinates of the gradient are going to be the partial derivatives with respect to each of the coordinates, right? With respect to x1, x2, f3, and so on. Then, when you take the divergence, the divergence is going to be the same as applying the derivative twice and then taking the sum of all of those derivatives. So you can, you can say that the Laplace operator is actually the sum of all of the unmixed second order derivatives. What do I mean by unmixed? Unmixed means there's no dx dy. There's no dz dx. We're not mixing derivatives. We're not taking derivatives with respect to one coordinate and then with another. We're just taking the derivative with respect to the same coordinate twice. So that's why it's a second order derivative. And also there's no first order derivatives. It's only second order derivatives. So there's only second order derivatives and they're all unmixed. So the Laplacian is the sum of all the unmixed second order derivatives of this function f. And you can see that this notation of the Laplacian is the, the delta notation. It's not this notation over here. But both of these are common and both of them are acceptable if there is no ambiguity for this meaning. So what have we talked about in this video? We have talked about the Laplacian operator. We have referenced other linear operators uh, or, or operators in, uh, in vector calculus, such as the divergence and the gradient. We've talked about where you would see the gradient and where you would see the divergence. And then what we did is we combined the divergence and the gradient. We said the divergence of the gradient of some function f is the same as the Laplace operator acting on f. Here we have a nice representation of the del operator, and here we have a alternative summation notation representation of the Laplacian. So where does this come up in nature? Well, electromagnetism. Think about the wave equation in electromagnetism. Or actually, even, even in general, wave equations in general, they have a Laplacian in them. Right? You have a Laplacian in all wave equations. And if you simplify that down to one dimension, you get the 1D wave equation. So this works to describe waves. It also works to describe diffusion, right? how things diffuse in 3D space, and also how heat diffuses, how heat transfers. That is also uh, very, very well described by the Laplacian or the Laplace operator. So this operator in vector calculus has a lot of applications when you're describing physical systems. It is a second order differential operator in the n-dimensional Euclidean space. That's what this Laplace operator is. And just remember, this guy has to be twice differentiable, and it's a real valued function. That's what f is. So uh, just as a quick reminder, all of this is in Cartesian coordinates. So uh, in two dimensions, that would be x, y. In three dimensions, x, y, z. So this uh, summation over here would actually just have two terms in two dimensions. That would be the second derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to y. In three dimensions, you would just add in an extra term in that sum, which would be the second derivative with respect to z. So I hope you've learned something about the Laplace operator and try and uh, find different sources and try and get comfortable with the different notations. That was the Laplace operator, also known as the Laplacian.